So what's this thing? Um, I don't know if you've run across these before. It's an RF device and um, it has SMA connectors on it. It is what's called a directional coupler and it's used to monitor signals. So there's an input, it's labeled in, and there's an out, and then there's CPL, which is coupled. So the you can think of this thing as a transmission line. So it just inserts into your into your coax and it becomes part of your uh, transmission line. But it takes a tiny bit of power and sends it over here so you can monitor things. You could run this off to a spectrum analyzer or a frequency counter, or you could put it onto a power meter. Um, you can do different things with this. So, so how do these things work? Um, they're kind of a little bit black magic, but not too bad. Uh, this one, I don't remember where I got this one, but it's marked. Uh, somebody wrote on it. Um, 0.5 to 20 gigahertz. So there's a usable range of frequencies for these things. And um, this one says 20 dB, so I'm not sure what the 20 dB means. Um, sometimes it means how much of the power is coupled. Um, could mean something else though, so we'll get to that. So they're kind of they're kind of cute little devices. I, I've always liked the looks, the, the shape of them. Um, you can see that, that there's this port here that's not being used. It's painted over. It looks exactly like one of these calibration standards that we have for the nano VNA. So we'll talk about that too. So let's, uh, let's look at a diagram of how these things actually look uh, inside. So inside they're going to look something like this. Here are the two connectors. Um, and it's a, a strip line or micro strip, I forget which is which, uh, type of transmission line. It's just a, 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 like a PC board, fancier. Um, and so here's an in, here's an out, and here's a couple. And the way these work is as the uh, RF goes through this device, this conductor here is fairly close and you get some RF uh, coupling. And so this thing kind of has a magnetic field kind of going around it as the electromagnetic waves go in and out and they kind of couple over this one. You kind of get a, another one over here and then, and then you can, some of the power comes out, comes out of this connector. And then this connector uh, in this particular one, it has a, um, uh, a 50 ohm load attached to it. So they're saying, hey, we're not going to use that one. We're just going to put 50 ohms here and uh, you, you can't take it apart. The 50 ohms is, uh, is attached. You probably can unscrew that and use it. Um, but that's not the way it's meant to be. Okay. So why do you want to do this? Well, um, since I'm an optics engineer, uh, this is how optics engineers do things very similar to this. Uh, here we have a, a light bulb and the light bulb goes through a lens and we collimate the light. So the column, the light comes out in this beam and we're going to shine that onto something. Um, we're going to try to measure, say the, uh, measure the, um, uh, photo resistor that, that we were using the other day. So we'll put, maybe have put a photo resistor here and then we can change the brightness of the led and see how the photo resistor changes. But we're not quite sure how much light is actually falling over here. So one of the tricks we can do is we can put a uh, partial mirror here. In fact, we can just put a piece of glass. A piece of glass has, a, has about a 4% transmission, uh, a reflection, I'm sorry. So about 4% of the light is reflected off of just a plain piece of glass. That's that annoying, annoying uh, reflection you see in the window. Uh, so about 4% of the light would come this direction. Um, and we could put a photodiode over here. So we could use this to monitor the brightness of this beam. We always know that 4% is being uh, captured by this diode. We know that 96% of the beam goes the other way. So we could calibrate this. And then you might also say, okay, well, we want this thing stable. So we're going to, uh, we're going to drive our, uh, we're going to drive our light bulb with a, with a, with an op amp. And then we're going to, uh, uh, bring our photodiode back around and, uh, we're going to feed back this thing and 
uh, it will it will keep this thing at a constant brightness, uh, even if the uh, even if the uh, voltage fluctuates or the aging of the light bulb or whatever. We can keep the constant constant power here. Well, in this particular device, we do the same thing only for um, only for RF stuff. We could monitor this. Like I said, a certain percentage will come out. We could send that to a spectrum analyzer so we could kind of see what type of signal is coming out of here. Um, a lot of times we'll put a power meter here and as you sweep a generator, let's say you're hooking this up to some type of RF generator and you set one frequency and then you set another frequency, well the, the levels of, this, of those two might be different. And you can monitor them here and you could either try to feed them back and correct them or you could just you, you could just monitor them. So you could say, okay, I'm going to put through this signal, but then the next time I put it through, I'm only measuring 98% as I did before. So I'm going to have to uh, correct that in my data and then I'll change frequencies and oops, now I'm only getting 90%. So I need, I'll record that and I'll just change that next time. So uh, it, it, it's always a good thing to, uh, to put couplers in, um, in RF circuits when you're doing measurements and stuff. You'll find these uh, in a fancy version of this in VNAs. Uh, one of the ways that they uh, sample it is with uh, with fancy fancy couplers. So let's uh, let's hook this up to the VNA and uh, see what it does. Okay, let's uh, let's set this thing up. Let's uh, set it up to sweep between a hundred. Oops. between 100 megahertz and 900 megahertz. So we're going to sweep between uh, 100 and 900. And now we're going to have to do a fancy calibration. Okay, so we're going to be make, making measurements on the end of uh, some short pieces of uh, coax here. So we're going to calibrate at the end of those. So we're going to try to be as accurate as we can. So we have these on there. All right. So we're going to put an open on S11. And now we'll do a short. We'll do a load. Now we'll do, do an isolation. We're going to be using the S21 port, so we're going to do an isolation. When you do an isolation, um, it's measuring crosstalk between the two channels, and it's recommended that you put 50 ohm loads on both, both channels. Your VNA kit, uh, if you buy a nano VNA, it only comes with one load. Um, I happen to have a second load. If you don't have a second load, maybe you have a filter, maybe you have something else that's kind of 50 ohms and you could put that in there, but I have two, so I'm gonna do that. Isolation. And then we're gonna do a through measurement, which is the S21 measurement. And I have a short coupler. All right, and we'll do the through measurement. Done. Save zero. Okay. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to take the uh, channel zero port, put that on the in, and the channel one port, put that on the out, and we will put a load on the coupling port. All right, we're just going to look at the insertion loss. So we're going to uh, change the channel to channel one. So now we're looking at log mag of channel one, which is the insertion loss. 
and the maximum insertion loss is at a gigahertz or 900 megahertz and is about 0.6 dB. So the insertion loss is very low for this uh, thing and it is pretty flat. All right. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is coupling. And uh, let's see, I should actually, uh, let me change lenses so we can, you can see what's going on here now that I've calibrated. Okay, so now you can see it. Uh, we're doing channel one, log bag, 10 dB per step. And uh, so this is the insertion loss and it's maxing out here. Uh, now it's right around 0.8. 0.8 dB in insert insertion loss. So, oh, that's because I loosened the connector. <laughs> anyway, it's flat. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is, uh, oh, I shouldn't have disconnected that one. I still need in and going into in. So I'm hooking up channel zero to the in of the uh, coupler. I'm going to uh, terminate the out of the coupler with a 50 ohm load over here. And I'm going to put channel, channel one onto the coupling port. There we go. And so we can, we can see this is the, uh, this is the uh, coupler coupling. Um, and so we are getting 20 dB of coupling. So this is, uh, this is zero. This is one step, two steps. So we're getting minus, minus 19 dB. And then it starts to roll off. So why does it start to roll off? Well, that's the frequency range. So this, this thing is calib uh, sold as a um, 50 megahertz to 2.4 gigahertz coupler. So, uh, here's, here's 500. So that's right in the center. So you can see it's very flat out to 500, then it falls off. Now, does it mean that you can't use it down here? Well, you can, you just need to know this correction curve. The nice thing about this is no matter where you operate, it's always 20 dB of coupling. And so that's what we see here. Right. So that's, uh, that's the, uh, that's the device coupled. Let me turn the room lights on so you can see that. That's the device coupled. I've got uh, channel zero going into the input, channel one going into the uh, coupling, and I've got the uh, out being terminated with a 50 ohm load, All right? So now we're gonna go the opposite way. We're gonna see what the rejection is, or this is what's called the direct directivity. And so we're gonna inject the signal on the out port and we're going to monitor the coupling port. Now there shouldn't be any. If there is some, that's crosstalk. It's one of the reasons that you do a, a isolation um, uh, isolation uh, calibration on things like the Nano VNA is there's some crosstalk and things. So we're going to measure the crosstalk here. We're going to inject in the out. Now in a perfect coupler, any power will come in and, and any power that's coupled off will go into this 50 ohm load and it'll just die and it won't make it here to this port. And of course some will, there'll be a little bit of leakage. So that's what we're going to measure now. And we'll terminate the, uh, terminate the other side with 50 ohms, of course. And okay, so let's see how good this thing is at rejection. Let me turn the room light off. So yeah, it's looking pretty good. Um, minus 46. So the worst is minus 44. That's at a gigahertz and at 500 megahertz, it's about minus 49. So that's pretty good. So let me, um, Let's see what the noise floor of this VNA is, if we're at the noise floor or not. So I'm going to disconnect here. So that's the noise floor. That's it going nowhere. 
I suppose I should put a 50 ohm load on that to measure its true noise floor. Yeah, there we go. So, yeah. So that's a short, or that's a load. And this is an, this is an open. And, uh, oops. We have about minus 48, 40, uh, minus 43, I'm sorry. So we're right at the, we're right at the noise floor of the, uh, of the nano VNA, but we are measure, able to measure this, uh, measure this coupler. So the writing on it, uh, was correct. Uh, 500 megahertz to two gigahertz or 20 gigahertz. Oh, it's 20 gigahertz. think. <laughs> I can't read the guy's writing just a second. That's no, two, two, two. There's a little decimal place in there. You can just barely read it. So it's uh, 50 megahertz to two gigahertz and 20 dB was what, which, which is what we measured. We measured about 19. So, um, yeah, that is an RF coupler.